Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got an intense and shocking story to share with you. Wife of three weeks lying to me already. I just found out that a guy my new wife works with was once a fling. We have been together for three years and we just got married a month ago. I have asked her if there was anything between her and this guy before because of the way he acts when I am around. She always says no I have never had anything to do with him. She swore. I've asked her more than on one occasion during our time together, and she always says no. The night before our wedding her friend made a comment about something and I kind of put two and two together and three weeks later asked her again, and once more she denied it. Then she said they just went out, and it meant nothing. Then I kept asking and she finally admitted they slept together when they were drunk. They work alone together at night in a hospital same room. Should I be pissed? I mean she lied to me her husband, and she continued to lie. I even asked her on the night before our wedding if there was anything. She wanted to tell me and of course she said no, who wouldn't be upset about this. I understand the past is the past, but this is not part of her past when she is still seeing this guy at work and texting and calling him. I'm not sure if I can get past this. I hate liars. The first month of marriage and this comes out, it should have came out before we were married. She had plenty of time to come clean. What would you do? I should mention they did the deed over five years ago. So, she says, comments. She is still calling him and texting him. Wow, I don't think you are overreacting at all. Without being married, you experience trickle truth. That's when as you go more and more about a relationship. People with more experience and smarts then I will give you some great advice here. Your best bet is to listen to what they say and act. As for me, first thing I would do is insist that she change jobs. That would be the minimum. Good luck. I would react the same as you. Why hide the fact that she slept with him? She lied to you. Why? Lies create doubts. Let her know that. I personally would tell her how it's made you feel mistrusting towards her, and she needs to understand that a marriage is about being a team. Have a long talk about it and find out why she lied. It's important to know. It's probably not just the one time. Can you say trickle truth? Don't trust anything that comes out of her mouth. You are living a lie. Only weeks into marriage, anal and get out. You wanna be walking on eggshells all the time, wondering if your future kids are yours. Hope he responds. You are right I did lie and I should have been honest. I didn't lie to get what I wanted. I lied out of fear. The fear of being judged, of losing you and being a disappointment. This is part of an email I received this morning after leaving the house without saying a word to her, and they don't call or text a lot just occasionally, and it is usually work-related. He just had a kid with another woman, and they are getting married. Thing is I am pissed that she lied, but it was a long time ago, and she had a BF for five years after their one-night thing, and I know he dated her roommate, but what pisses me off is why did she lie, she says, cause she didn't want me to judge her, but what the hell, and who knows why the BF before me found out and blew up about it. And that's why, I don't know, I'm just shocked. She had a BF before me for five years, and he was before him. We have been together the last three years, just trying to state the fact that he was way before me. I'm not going to make a rash, emotional decision I'm going to drink and clear my head and figure out what I want to do. And if I decide to end it I'm going to get all my crap in order first. I checked the county website but couldn't find an annulment form so I will have to go down there hope they are open tomorrow morning. I'm not going home tonight I'm going to find somewhere else to stay. Well I am home now and she is here and come to find out this happened after the 5 year BF and a month before me she said she broke with her ex got drunk and slept with this guy. She said she never told anyone because it meant nothing and she was embarrassed about it. I talked to her best friend tonight about it and she didn't know and said she's never seen anything happen at work. Kind of drunk now and sitting outside in front of the fire trying to clear my head but it's not working. Life is too short for this. I don't get it she is all feeling bad and crying but it's all kind of I'm sorry poor me crap. Three years of the same lie is what is bothering me. She told the same lie the night before our wedding. This is crazy what did I do to deserve this and the kids are going to get hurt from us breaking up. Comments. OP this is a tough one. On one hand you could argue that this happened before she met you. The past is the past. I hate that cliche and that you have no solid proof that she has been unfaithful to you since she's been with you. 
On the other hand, this is a huge red flag and the incessant lying and slow trickle of information is not working in her favor. When you first posted, I figured that she did this five years ago while she was in her teens or early 20s. But then you mentioned that she is 31. So clearly this is not just some college fling or puppy love. She's a grown woman and there is probably more to this story than you even want to know. She works with this guy on a frequent, daily basis, which itself isn't an issue. But you had suspicions for a reason based on his demeanor around you. And obviously your suspicions had some veracity in them. A month into a marriage is too soon to be having problems like this, but giving up so quickly isn't necessarily the best answer either. Assume she is telling the truth, that she ducked the guy once five plus years ago, and that she has never been unfaithful to you in the meantime. Would this be acceptable to you? Probably, and if she's being honest with her info, albeit lying by omission, then you should be able to get through this with solid communication moving forward. However, in her case and at her age, her story has more holes than a golf course, and you're still discovering more holes. We don't have all of the intangible information, so it's easy for us to say divorce, but as an outsider looking at this, it's really difficult to take her story with this other guy seriously. Opie responds, I told her that Friday night that I wanted her to delete him from her phone and no more calls. She was pretty historical that night, so maybe she freaked when she seen he called, and that's why she deleted the VM. Just a thought. I am really trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, but it's not easy. She even said that are not alone much at work. Well, her dad was just admitted to the hospital for a knee issue, and I had a chance to see the inside of the lab and look at it from a where-would-you-cheat point of view. Let's just say it would be very easy to get away with it in that lab. His wife works at the hospital too, I'm thinking of hanging out around super time and see if I can run into her get to know her and mention the past to her. Yeah, well I'm not giving in things aren't the way they were. I remind her of the situation all the time, not daily, but close. She is working Friday night and she said she was working with a woman who we both know but didn't know who else she was working with. She said she hasn't checked yet to see but her work schedule is hanging on the wall next to her desk here at home so it's obvious who she is working with and it's him. What's sad is I want to believe her and I know she is head over heels for me but she said she lied because she would leave her if I found out about him. And I would've, I would've called off the wedding until I knew the truth. How could she love both of us? I mean we are really close. That's why it's so hard to imagine her messing around. How can I really know? I've never seen so many red flags in my life. But I cannot leave just yet. I need to secure my financial situation first. I am watching her. I at random had her log into her email and work email and she also gave me her cell phone, website, username, and password so I could check phone records. She also agreed to take a polygraph. Update, we have been ducking like rabbits. I'm not going to let this get in the way. I have made it very clear that if anything else comes out, I am gone. And yes, she did serve me a crap sandwich, which could have been taken care of a long time ago. Can't always focus on the negative. The situation with the wife is still the same. She offered up her phone records and said she would take a polygraph. The only testing site is 90 miles away and only works Monday to Friday. I am working on getting that in order. She has been switching shifts with people she works with, so she doesn't have to work with him at night. No more lies that I am aware of so far. I still have a suspicion in my mind about why he called that night and the VM. I can only imagine what that said. Other than that, I have been watching her the best I can I have a VAR, but it hasn't turned up anything yet. Has anyone ever been able to get through this type of problem? It seems on here the stories all lead to the big D. Half a year later, update, life is good or has been so far, no worries. But tonight, I found out she is working with him again. I found out because I checked her schedule. Until now, she has been changing shifts with her friends, so she would not be working with him. It really hasn't been an issue. So should I bring this up? I mean, she didn't ask if it was okay or if I would be concerned if she was working with him again. I haven't even let her know that I know that she is working with him. She was first with him three weeks before we met. It wasn't years before it was weeks. And to get you all up to date, she is now pregnant with my child. Hope you guys get through your problems out there. Story two, what to do. My story is I have been married for almost 12 years. I was always happy for the most part. Sure, we had our arguments from time to time, but I was happy. 
We have a son that is about to turn 10 and a daughter who is 6. My wife has been unhappy at times and told me at different times that she didn't feel like there was any communication between us, and she said I wasn't there for her emotionally. This last January, she said we needed to talk, and she informed me that I needed to find some place to live, that we needed to separate. I talked to her and said that is not what I wanted and said I could do better. After about a week, she agreed to me not moving out. I thought things were going fine, and she even commented to me that she told one of the girls she works with that I was doing a lot better and that I really seemed to be listening to her and paying more attention to her. By early March, she was planning a trip the weekend of May 1st to run a marathon with her sister. She wanted me to go. I told her I would like to go, but I couldn't because I couldn't take off work the Friday, before and Monday after the marathon. Plus, my son was in a baseball tournament that weekend and I helped coach his team and I would also have my daughter. She got really mad at me because I wasn't going to go with her. We got through that, so I thought. I talked and texted her a few times while she was gone, and I could tell there was something wrong. I picked the kids up early on Monday, so they would be there when she got home. When she got home, the kids ran and hugged her, and I gave her a hug, but she was cold as ice. We walk in the house, and she went to lay down, and I walked in the bedroom, and she said we need to talk. You need to find a place. I begged, pleaded, and everything else for a week, but no give. She said she needed space, so I rented an apartment. Was there for a week and she called and said we needed to talk. So I went by there and she said she was scheduling an appointment with a mediator that she wanted a divorce. I work an odd shift schedule, one month of nights and then one month of days. So we told the kids I was living in the apartment so I can sleep during the day when I work nights. My son cried and said he didn't want me to live anywhere else. I teared up and she gave me a look from Satan himself and said I was going to have to control myself. We went to the mediator and split everything including the kids 50 to 50. She filed in June and our last court date is early November. We have done some things together with the kids, like a family vacation. But I don't know how to act towards her when we were on the vacation a couple of weeks ago. I didn't say a whole lot to her and she said in front of the kids I know you usually don't say much. But the silence is defining. This only confirms everything. My son looked at me and said he has been talking. She shot back at him that he needed to stay out of the conversation. We went to the WWE wrestling a couple weeks ago together and at dinner before the event my SDBXW asked my son what he wanted for his birthday. And he said, my dad to move back home. She snapped back as cold and mean as I have ever heard, well, that's not going to happen. So, if you want something, you better think of something else. I'm sorry for such a long post, I just don't know who this person is. She would have never said anything like the things she is saying to the kids now. After she said that to my son about his birthday, she went to the bathroom and my son says to me she's not always like this and I said like what? And he said like this. She is only like this when we are all together. I'm wondering if she just tries to be in a bad mood or tries to start arguments in front of the kids to justify to them that that is why the divorce is happening. That mom and dad argue too much to stay together. I just wanted to add I love my wife and want my family together. I told her I would do whatever it takes for that to happen. She says she notices the changes in me towards the kids and it makes her even matter. I wasn't a bad dad before, but I'll admit I am a better dad now. But, as she says, too little, too late. Just last week, I went over to the house to mow the yard, and she came home, and we talked a little, and she actually said it wasn't a bad marriage. I thought to myself, then why is it ending? The last time we were all together, she looked at me and asked why I was in a good mood so much lately. I asked if she wanted me to be in a bad mood. She said it just looked so fake. I said if my being in a good mood was any indication that this is what I wanted that wasn't the case, but I have no control over what is happening and I'm dealing with it the best I can. She says it makes her even matter that she couldn't bring out the good in me. I agree with you gearhead on she is committed to the course. It's like a racehorse with blinders on racing to the finish. And the kid's feelings are minor going to keep her from getting there. My first mistake, moving out. She actually said to me, if you don't move out, I am. I should have let her, but I had no clue it was going to crumble this fast. I moved out second week of May and third week of May went to mediator. 
Someone else was one of the first things I asked. She said no. Her sister and brother-in-law said no. And I really don't think there was, because I think he would have surfaced by now or I think she would have told me to be honest. She likes to throw the divorce in my face a lot and tell me what a screw-up I am and how I caused this whole mess. I work nights sometimes, so I have to sleep during the day. Last night I called to see if I could get the kids today after work and she said no. Why don't I go back to sleeping all day and see the kids for 15 minutes before I go to work? I think she is seeing that I am doing better so now she is going to try and hurt me with the kids. Update, I called just a moment ago to ask if I could pick up the kids and she said it again. Your fake personality is repulsive. And I just laughed and said what on earth are you talking about? She said your fake cheery personality. I am an IC and I said the same thing to my counselor that in today's times it could be another woman. I really don't think so, but hey you never know. I don't want it to sound like I did nothing wrong in our marriage, but there was never any screwing around, drinking or meds. I could have shown more love and appreciation to her and my kids. I wasn't perfect by any means, but in my mind not a deal breaker. My wife and I are separated about to officially be divorced now for. She filed, I don't want the divorce. I admit I got complacent in the marriage and didn't show enough love and appreciation as I should have obviously or we wouldn't be where we are. I never stopped loving my wife or our two children, I guess I just didn't show it enough. We separated in early May and at first, I did the usual begging and pleading, later I found out that is what you don't want to do. So I backed off. When I have the kids on my weekends, she said she doesn't do good without them and she can't sleep. She feels alone. I told her that I love her and don't want this, and that we can work on our problems. She said it is just weird that I want to work on the relationship now, that she can't go backwards, and it is too little too late. I just can't understand how a parent who misses their kids so much is willing to see them half the time and give up on the marriage. She says she has worked on our marriage the last 11 years, and she is exhausted and has no work left in her. She said she doesn't know if she can forgive herself for the misfortune that this will affect our kids, 10 and 6, but is not willing to stay and work on the marriage. There is no other man that I know of and no drinking, drugs, or anything of the sort, just that I haven't been there for her emotionally, and she says we have grown apart. I just don't understand how you can just give up on your marriage and be willing to see your kids half of the time, but then cry because you don't do good without the kids. I guess she has been hurt by me more than the hurt of missing our kids, not physically but emotionally hurt, not feeling loved. My son's birthday was Saturday and they stayed with me Friday night. We went over to the house Saturday and my SDBXW and I were working on his birthday cake. We bought an ice cream cake and we were turning it into a wrestling ring with black twizzles as corner posts and candy straws as the ropes. She cut part of the cake off to make it square and used part of the piece she cut off to use as steps to get into the ring. I said, that is pretty cool, I never thought of making steps, that is a good idea. She says, nothing you say is sincere. About 10 minutes later, she says this is going to sound weird, but you need to leave and come back in a couple of hours. I need to be here with just the kids. I got mad, but didn't say anything, told the kids bye and my son asked why I was leaving. I got in my truck pulled out of the driveway and turned the corner and pulled over shut my truck off and walked back in the house. My daughter asked what I forgot and I said nothing. I walked into the kitchen and calmly told her that it was my son's birthday and I'm going to spend the day with him and if she couldn't handle being around me, she needed to leave. She said you're in a dollar sign dollar sign hole. I said maybe, but I'm not leaving. I guess she called her sister because she left with her to go get a coffee. She came back about 15 minutes later and said I don't care if you stay here. But you were just smothering me in the kitchen with your fake conversation. Some of my son's friends came over for his birthday and we took them to lay laser tag. When we got back, she went straight to bed and I stayed with the kids. I checked on her and she said her sinuses were killing her. I got her some medicine and another blanket because she was freezing. I could see she was crying and I asked if she was alright and she said that she just has bad anxiety. I said anxiety over what and she just said her life. And she doesn't sleep at all without the kids there. I told her to get some rest and I would be there with the kids. 
She did let me touch her forehead to see if she had fever. It was really nice to touch her. I told her just the other day that through all the mean things she has said and the attitude she has had with me, I still love her and I always did and always will. Love is among other things a choice and I choose to love her. Her sister called me the other day and told me she is still trying to talk to her and she said she told her that through all he has been through he still loves you. That has to mean something. Her sister said she said, what has he been through? Her sister said, he was kicked out of his home and separated from his family. I really am proud of the way I have not really gotten mad through all of this. Gotten really frustrated but haven't yelled or gotten mad and said things I would regret. I hope that counts for something in her eyes. She told me Sunday that it is just weird that I want to work on the relationship now and she doesn't. I said did you think I would just say okay and walk away? I went and bought some flowers today and left them at the house for her when she gets home. She works late tonight and I have the kids. I just left a handwritten note that said I hope this makes your day a little brighter. Rose I will take the advice you gave with the kill her with kindness. I have looked at the 180 and like some of the concept but I think some of it was part of the problem in the marriage. She feels I didn't appreciate what I had and she felt like we weren't good friends and we didn't grow together and have an emotional connection. But in all reality, nothing I say is going to be right in her eyes now. So my actions may speak a little louder. I pray every day the Lord will soften her heart and if it is his will then, that is what he will do in his time. The kids and I went to my son's hitting lesson last night and she showed up not long after it started. We talked for just a second about maybe getting my son some strength and agility training. Then she tries to argue with me about how I don't need to be at every one of my son's hitting lessons. I work in odd shifts so I schedule them around my schedule. He goes on Wednesday one week and then Friday the next week. But I schedule them so she can be there also if she wants. She said I shouldn't schedule them around my schedule, that I don't have to be at every one of them and that I don't go to every one of my daughter's gymnastics lessons. I told her if we were able to change my daughter's schedule, I would do that but it is Mondays only and I work every other Monday so I miss every other week. I told I would be at every one of my son's lessons. I'm sorry. Every year before now I have coached my son's baseball team. She said now that you are not coaching you don't have to be at everyone. I guess she just doesn't want me to be there or she is just trying to argue over nothing. We left there and she said we needed to come by the house and get the kids some clothes for the kids school pictures today. I said we were and while we were doing that, I would fix the dishwasher. We get over there and I worked on the dishwasher and got it running. There were a lot of dishes in the sink so I started loading. She said no I'll do that and I said I got it. She walked through the kitchen a few minutes later and said stop doing that I'll do it. Again I said I got it. I finished putting the ditches in and started it. Then my son wanted to play catch with the football. So we went outside to play catch for a minute. When we went back in, she seemed to be in a hurry for us to leave so we left. As we were leaving, she gave me a thanks for fixing that. I didn't get a chance to talk to her much about us because the kids were there after we were at the apartment for a little bit. I called her and asked her when exactly she wanted to have the kids this weekend for her birthday. And she said whenever. I said it was her choice and I wasn't going to deny her the kids on her birthday. I did ask her when did my son ask her if I could move back home for a week and see how it goes. She seemed to get agitated and said the last time she had them she couldn't remember. They were lying in bed and he asked her and she said that's not going to happen. We tried that. It didn't work. When you get older you will understand. I don't know if she says these things in a hateful tone to my son or just to me. I told her I was just wondering when he asked her and what was said. She said it was no big deal. I said okay and the phone went dead. I called back and asked if she hung up on me because she didn't say bye or anything and she said I thought you were done talking and I said no I still want to talk to her face to face and she said what do you want and I said you. She said well that can't happen and we are not putting this off. I told her I loved her and I wasn't giving up on us. Later on, I sent her a texted saying I would like for us all to go to dinner for her birthday. And she never replied. The kids and I stopped by the house this morning to get some different pants and she seemed to be in a good mood. Not towards me, but in a good mood. We left and I told her to have a good day.
After I dropped the kids off and got back to my apartment, I called and asked her if she found out what is supposed to happen in court tomorrow, and she said she doesn't know that she would send me the email from the attorney, but we were not putting this off. She asked me why I needed to know and I said because I am part of this also and I wanted to know what is going on. She said she would be walking around dazed and confused, but the attorney hopefully would know what was going on. She said she was sending the email right now, but when I got the email, it was a confirmation for my son's hitting lesson that I sent her. I sent her an email back and told her I didn't get it and that I didn't want to delay it. I wanted to stop it. I loved her and wanted to do whatever it takes to keep our family together. She said I'm a good guy and a great father, but there just isn't an emotional connection. She said to me not long ago that it wasn't a bad marriage, she just sees it as what it is to people that didn't grow together but grew apart. She did finally send me the email from the attorney and she is supposed to go before the judge Friday at 1.30. I'm not obligated to be there, but I am going to be there. I plan on getting her to talk with me after. I am on the night shift right now, so I couldn't talk to her tonight. She never responded to my request that the kids and I take her to dinner Saturday night. So I texted her right before I walked into work saying I guess it was a no on the dinner with the kids and I. But if she would go to dinner with just me, that would be great. I also said I know that she didn't mean to be hurtful when she said she got married and had the kids and she could mark those off her bucket list. Although it did hurt. I said I know that was just her hurt talking. She responded telling me to stop playing the victim and quit turning her words into negatives. And if I took that as such then that confirms the fact that I absolutely don't know her at all. I texted her back and said I'm not playing the victim and I was just trying to tell her I know where she is at and I know it is her hurt that is lashing out and I understand that. I told her that I have always and still do love her. I just made the mistake of not always showing my love but it was always there. I told her my mistakes have hardened her heart for me, but it isn't something we can't overcome. I told her that I carry the guilt every day that I hid my love for her from her, and the guilt that our kids will only see us half the time because of it. I agree with the letting her get mad. We had a couple of talks a couple of months ago, and she really let me have it. I told her I thought that was good for her as hard as it is to hear it. The last couple of weeks, she has kind of been nice. But the last couple of days, she has been a viper. I called the house tonight and was going to talk to the kids about eight and no one answered. So I called her cell and she didn't answer. So I texted her and asked if they weren't home or was. She just not answering. She never responded. I called again about nine and my son answered. I talked to him for a few minutes and he asked when he was getting to stay with me and I said probably not until Sunday. He said, but I thought we were coming to your house on Saturday. I said, well, you and Sissy are going to stay with mom on Saturday for her birthday. He said, well, why can't we stay with you until we go to eat at the Japanese steakhouse? I said, are you guys going there to eat Saturday night? And he said, yes, are you not coming? He turned and said, mom, is dad not coming to eat with us? I could hear her in the background say, no, dad has to work, which isn't the truth. I told my son that I wanted to talk to my daughter, but my wife said, no, we are studying for her spelling test tomorrow. I said, okay, I'll call back in a minute. I called her cell and it immediately went to voicemail. Then I called the home phone and no answer. I texted her and said I would like to take her and the kids golfing Saturday. And I was just wanting to tell my daughter good luck on her spelling and reading test tomorrow. I also asked if she wanted me to take my son to a friend of his birthday party on Sat. She did respond with the party got moved to next Sat. I replied with if you don't want to go play golf or to dinner all you have to do is say no. I don't get the no answer. She never responded back. I'm not going to give up, but I think it is a lost cause. She I was just a stump in the relationship and I sat on the sidelines. But we always went and did things together and as a family, I, I don't go out with the guys or anything like that. We have been to Vegas a few times, but yet she says I never wanted to do anything with her. Sometimes I think she really just doesn't love me anymore, but I hope her anger means she still cares. Well, I got a call this morning saying that the attorney needed me to sign a paper before court today. I asked her what paper and where. She said she would send me the email. The email didn't show, so I called her back and said I didn't get it. 
She said it was just a paper with numbers all broken down and the child support numbers and that she was just supposed to go before the judge and tell him that she didn't want the child support. I said, OK, I'll meet you at the courthouse. She calls back about an hour later and says the attorney said that I didn't need to sign it and that I wasn't obligated to be there and was no need to be there. She said that they weren't trying to pull something over on me, that it was just she had to tell the judge that she didn't want the child support. I said okay, but with every intention of going. I show up at the courthouse, and I see her and the attorney walking in the other door and wait on them. They turned a corner, and I followed them up the escalator until they seen me. We go into an empty courtroom, and he tells us to sit on a bench, and he would get the judge. While we are sitting there, she says what are you doing here? You didn't have to be here. I said I am involved in this, and I want to know what is going on. She said, he is defending me, well not defending, but representing me. I said I know that, but I still want to know what is going on. Just about that time the attorney says you can come back here. So I let her get up and he says you can come back here also. We go into the judge's chamber and he says to us, raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth? And so on. The attorney asks us some legal stuff, and the judge signs some papers, and says you are now officially divorced, and by law you cannot marry for six months. Wow. Never seen this coming. We walk out of the judge's chambers, and the attorney says we don't have to worry about the November 4th date. He would take care of it. He turns to the court clerk and says strike the November, for date it is taken care of. We walked out, and the attorney had another case, so he went a different direction. We were going down the escalator, and I say does this mean we are officially divorced, and she said I think so. Then she laughs and says are you upset we can't marry for six months. I didn't respond and turned the corner and left. When I got down the road away, I called her and said would you like to talk about what just happened and she said she is as shocked as I am and that she had no clue that was going to happen, that she had her brain wrapped around forth, and that she thought that was the final day. But this didn't change anything. She said we were just incompatible and that I didn't do the things that she needed and that I did what I thought I needed to do but it wasn't enough for her. She said it doesn't make her way right or wrong or my way right or wrong just incompatible. She said she doesn't love me and I can't make her love me. She said she wants to find someone that understands her and that can appreciate her for her. I was just in a day so I don't remember what all else was said but she said she had to go because she couldn't drive and talk. I went home to change clothes and call work to tell them I wouldn't be in tonight. I went to the family home to get my boat out of the garage and she called and said she was just calling to check on me and see if I was all right. I said, no, I'm not all right that I didn't want this and I don't want to lose my kids. She said, you're not losing the kids. And I said, I am losing them half the time, but it wasn't just the kids. I love her and this just isn't what I wanted, I know we could have worked on us and got through this. But now we will never know. She said that is where we are different. I don't love you and the kids are fine. She said she is happy now and if the parents are happy then the kids will be happy. I said I didn't agree and that I was at the house getting my boat out of the garage. She says oh you're getting your boat out of the garage, thanks. Then she hung up. I took my boat down to my mom and dad's house. And, while I was down there, I saw where she posted on her Facebook. It's official, real classy. She called just a moment ago and said she was just checking on me and said really sarcastic I was worried about your mental state. I didn't even respond to that I just said call me when the kids get up tomorrow so I can come get them. That has been my thought the whole time, but nothing ever surfaced. It wouldn't surprise me, but I just don't know. I'm definitely going to start the 180 for myself for sure. Hopeful one day soon I can let go, but I just don't do good without the kids. It is just heartbreaking. That is just the part one don't understand. How you can just give up on a marriage that she described as not a bad marriage and break up our family and give up half the time with the kids. I could have it explained a million times and I wouldn't understand. Maybe someday I will. Update, I had the kids last night and she called to talk to the kids. I asked the kids if they wanted to talk and they said they were good, meaning they didn't want to talk on the phone. She said, I make them talk to you when you call. Now keep in mind she will only answer half of the time when I know they are home and when I text her asking about the kids she rarely responds. So, 
I handed the phone to my son and told him to talk to his mom. He talked to her for just a second then handed the phone to my daughter. She talked for just a second then got off the phone. X calls today and says she is just calling to check on me. I said I was fine and she asked what I was doing. I said I was looking on the net for houses and she asked where at and I said I was just looking. I told her I wasn't going to get one soon but will have to eventually. She suggested a couple of areas and I said thanks. Then again, she said she was just calling to check on me. I said I'm fine and thanks. When I picked my kids up from school my daughter said she needed to make a poster for school. And it was supposed to be turned in today. I asked her how to come I am just now finding out about this. And she said they sent a paper home last Thursday. The ex had them Thursday and Friday. I called her and asked if she knew where this paper was and she said it was at home and that she would help her with it. I said we were going to go by the house to get the paper. She said she was on her way and would be there shortly. The kids and I found the paper and left. She texted me not long after and asked if we already left and I said yes. We are going to get some poster board. But would she get some family photos to use on the poster and bring them to my daughter's gymnastics tonight? She never responded, so I sent her a text back saying yes, no, maybe. She finally responded yes, of course. While we were at my daughter's gymnastics, I told her if she wanted to help with the project, that was fine. But she would never let me come help with something like that when she had them. She said she didn't care either way. If I didn't need her help, she wouldn't help. I said I could handle it. Right before we left, she asked if we could agree to do the holiday schedule like we always do the kids and I would go to my parents' Thanksgiving for lunch. Then drop the kids off so she could go to her mother's Thanksgiving night. I said that was fine. She said Christmas the kids and I would go to my parents' Christmas Eve and she could have them Christmas. She said that way it will be the same as it always has been for the kids. I said it won't be the same because I have always been there Christmas morning after Santa came. She said, well, Santa can come Christmas Eve at your house and Christmas Day at hers. I said it wasn't going to be normal any way we do it, but I guess that way was as good as it can get. She said, I think it will be fantastic. Maybe we can switch off every year. I said, that sounds good. She stays at gymnastics for just a minute to fill out a paper and the kids and I left as we were pulling out of the parking lot. She came walking out the door and was walking right in front of us. I gave my truck some gas like I was going to run over her. Mind you, we were about 20 yards from her, and she gave me a go to hell look and shook her head. I thought it was funny, but she didn't see any humor in it. She didn't even wave or anything to the kids. Oh, well, I'm being de nice. I will look up the manning up. It is just in my nature to be a nice guy, but I understand what you are saying. Nice guys do finish last, I guess, in my case anyway. I called the kids last night about nine to tell them good night, and while I was talking to my daughter, I could hear her in the background saying, okay, that's enough. Let your brother talk. Then my son talked about to Sakans, and my wife said, okay, son, that's enough. Talk to him tomorrow. The only reason I called at nine was because I called about 8.30 and no one answered. I texted her later and said the screaming in the background was a little ridiculous. She texted me back this morning and said she didn't mean to be a jerk, but the kids were in bed. I texted her back and said she was being a jerk because the kids couldn't have been in bed for more than two minutes and it wasn't like I was going to talk for 30. And if she would answer the phone, it would have been a non-issue. I hate to do it, but I can play the not answer game when I have them. Half the time she never calls to talk to them anyway, which is really odd. I really do need a haircut. The funny thing is, that is what she does. We opened up our own hair salon about one year after we were married, and she is the only person that has cut my hair for the past 12 years. I did go to a cheap hair cutting place one time since I left, and it was really odd feeling. I will find somewhere to get it cut tomorrow, because I really need it cut. She called today, I didn't answer. Then she left a text saying we needed to go to the attorney's office and sign a quick claim deed for the house today or tomorrow. I replied about three hours later saying tomorrow. The hits just keep on coming. On the bright side, I do get to pick the kids up from school tomorrow. Yes, our divorce is final and, in our agreement, I let her keep the house. I know really dumb on my part. I took nothing for the business that we started together and she got the house. I guess that is the blowback from being a nice guy. I get to walk away with just my stuff and start all over. The quick claim deed is just to get my name off the title.
At least we do have joint custody, and I get my kids half the time, better than every other weekend. This is where the anger comes in. If I would have known she was going to be such a witch, then I wouldn't have been such a nice guy and gave her everything. I just really didn't think it was going to end up like this. Lesson learned, but expensive lesson. I'm doing my best, but it sure is hard. It would be so much easier if I didn't have to see her or talk to her so often. I mean, I still talk or see her every day because of something with the kids. She called earlier this afternoon to ask if I wanted to go on a field trip with my daughter in a couple of weeks. She couldn't go, then started to try and criticize my choice of dinner for the kids. I just said, is that all you wanted? Then she said, yes. I said, okay, bye. I'm not going to put up with that crap anymore. I'm not going to argue. I'm just not going to listen to it. We are not married anymore, and I'm not going to listen to it. I went to go get my hair cut earlier, went into one salon, and they were booked up. The lady suggested I go just down the street. So I did. I walked in there, and there were about four girls that used to work at our salon. I had no clue they worked there, and I didn't think they recognized me. I got my hair cut by a girl I didn't know, and left without talking to anyone. About an hour later a girl that used to work at our salon friend me on Facebook. She works at the salon where I just got my hair cut. But she wasn't there. About 10 minutes later my ex called asking why I friend her, and why I disrespected her by going to that salon when I knew all those girls worked there. I told her that I didn't know they all worked there, and it was just bad luck I even ended up there. She was just livid and screaming and calling me every name in the book. Then she texted me that if I buy a house in what she calls the hood, she was going to fight me for full custody. She and her sister befriended me on Facebook. Boy, all I did was walk in and get a haircut. Guys, I think I am covered as far as the quick claim deed. It says in our agreement that she gets the house and I am free from any financial aspects of the house. I really have had my fill of her crap. I still have a bunch of tools and whatnot in my shop at the house, and we agreed verbatim to let me keep that store that stuff in there until I found a house. Should have gotten it in writing. She calls yesterday and says I have 30 days from the divorce final to get my stuff, where she can donate it to Goodwill. Guess I'm going to have to find a storage. Some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth and things she texts. I really think she has lost her mind. My comment, just ignore her, ghost her. There is no point of dealing with her anymore. Focus on new women. There are plenty out there, but if you focus on yourself, there's always someone waiting for you in the corner. Work on yourself, your body shape, your income, and most importantly, your confidence. If you agree, sub and hit that bell and enjoy your weekend. Stick around until the end to see how it all unfolded and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more jaw-dropping stories. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My wife, 46 female, was well connected to the women in the area. She was a social butterfly so she was always out. Whenever she told me 41 male she had a meeting or some social gathering to go to, I believed everything she said. For eight years she organized countless events and seemed to be the most dependable gossip source in town, while simultaneously maintaining over 40 friendships. One of her close friends was a woman named Virginia. She was also married with two young children. I think my wife was jealous of the lifestyle Virginia lived. They were well off and even though all our bills were paid, they were living a little more luxuriously. One fateful day, I got a call from a different friend of my wife's. Samantha was concerned because she hadn't seen my wife in a while. This was alarming to me. For longer than I could remember at least twice a week my wife said she was going out with her friends. She didn't give me details. I asked Sam if she'd been attending the usual woman events that she expected my wife to be at. She said yes. She added that she wasn't the only one missing my wife, but she was probably the first one to call me. My wife basically dropped off the face of the earth to them. She was in the middle of planning this 5K to raise money for needy families in the area when she went quiet. She told one of the girls that she needed some space, but it had been about two months since she showed up to anything in person so they were concerned. I got off the phone with her seconds before my wife entered the room. She was dressed beautifully, with dangly earrings and a form-fitting dress. Her curls bounced and her heels clicked as she told me she was leaving for a big dinner with some friends in honor of Samantha's birthday. The very same woman that just called me concerned for her well-being. I knew something was majorly wrong. My mind was racing and my heart was pounding. I couldn't just let her leave. I grabbed her hand and kissed it. I told her I would drive her to the dinner because it would give me more time to admire her. 
She was extremely nervous trying to tell me I didn't have to. I just insisted repeatedly to the point where it was awkward. In the car she gave me directions to the dinner. She told me it was being hosted by Virginia, her aforementioned close friend that was also married. When she told me this, a post on Facebook popped into my head. It was by Virginia talking about the week-long trip she was about to take. My wife had commented on it, wishing her safe travels. This was just three days ago. My heart wouldn't stop racing and I started to sweat as I gripped the steering wheel. I didn't know how to handle whatever was going to happen. My wife caught my attention again, saying she didn't know why I insisted on driving her, might just have to race back home to catch the kickoff. I knew what she was trying to do. She wanted me to feel like I didn't have time to walk her to the door or investigate her lies any further. I joked with her saying I didn't have to catch it. One of the players would. She shifted uncomfortably, waiting a minute before saying she felt bad I couldn't come inside since it's a girl's, only dinner. I could feel my anger growing. She was talking so suspiciously. I parked the car and to my wife's horror turned it off and unhooked my seatbelt. She tried to give me a kiss and told me to pick her up at nine. I said okay but I still got out of the car and walked with her. She stopped looking at me. I said I wanted to walk her to the door like the gentleman I was. She said I didn't need to and told me to head home. That was a pretty deliberate denial but I just smiled. I walked up to the door in front of her and that made her super nervous. I knocked hard and she was just frozen. Her mouth was hanging open. I looked at her and it was all I could do not to laugh or point out how odd she was being. AP opened the door wearing a soft-looking robe with his initials. He looked pleased for a split second, but it quickly turned to nervous panic. I spoke loudly. I said hello and stepped inside saying I was just bringing my wife to the woman's only dinner hosted by Virginia. I asked where all the women were. Neither of them moved. I sarcastically teased my wife for saying she was going to be late when clearly she was early. When they continued standing there with their mouths gaping, I pointed out the dinner table set for two with two filled wine glasses and pretended to have a puzzled face. A piece started turning purple, but he remained silent. My wife weakly said the girls were running late. I loudly said oh really and asked where Virginia was. Seconds passed in silence before my wife said she probably just ran to the store for something. She tried to ask AP to back her up, but he was clearly frustrated. He said there was no point in playing games and I clearly knew they were lying. He said they were caught and it was game over. My wife finally looked upset. AP ordered us out of his house, nearly pushing us out the front door. Right before he shut it, I said it would be a shame if anyone told his wife what was going on. He froze, looked me in the eye and asked what I wanted. I told him to send me any proof he had of his affair with my wife so the divorce would go in my favor. When he hesitated, I told him there was no reason two marriages had to end, but I would take him down with me if he didn't help me out. He reluctantly agreed to send proof. My wife lost it when she heard him. She just screamed, took the keys from me and drove off. I got a ride back home and found that my wife had packed some of her stuff and took her car. I received AP's proof. It was a combination of messages and images. If I was wondering anything before this, my questions were answered. They definitely had sex many, many times. I tried to wait until after the divorce was final before I told Virginia everything, but I couldn't wait. It wasn't much longer after that that Virginia started getting revenge on my wife. She knew where her mother lived and since we were getting divorced it was a good guess she'd be staying there. It speculated that Virginia was the one who slashed my wife's car tires and carved an unflattering word into the hood. AP and her divorced and my ex was exiled from the community of women. Now she has absolutely no money, friends or husband, and nothing to show for her 46 years of life. OP I am so sorry your wife lied to you countless times and started an affair. It's never easy to get through something like this, but at least you know it wasn't your fault. There's never an acceptable reason to cheat on someone. I believe she did this because she was envious of the life Virginia lived, and by sleeping with her husband, she felt better about herself. Be thankful for the life you have, and make it a goal to always look after yourself. At the end of the day, you will be the man looking in the mirror and need to be proud of what you see. That starts with taking care of yourself, including your skin, which is why I am excited to have Teach Hanley as the sponsor for today's video. They help men start and maintain a skincare routine by simplifying the entire process. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. These include a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, and a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells. It also comes with an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 to protect your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. 
They really make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever. But you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers from around the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teach Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, and free U.S. shipping. You can also pause or cancel your membership at any time. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Now let's jump into our second story for today. My wife, 42 female, thought it would be a great idea for me, 39 male, and our kids ages 12 and 14 to take horseback riding lessons together. We've been together excluding a three-year separation for 14 years. During that separation, I had moved out of state into a tiny studio apartment with my handicapped brother. He was much older than me and in poor health. It wasn't the kind of situation I could bring my family into, and our parents had passed away. Sadly, my brother passed too after I cared for him for the last three years of his life. My wife and I agreed not to see anyone else during this time because our marriage wasn't ending. It was just an inconvenient living situation. We met up countless times at halfway point so I could visit with the three of them and keep our marriage consummated. Still, the shortest length of time we had to wait was three months. It wasn't easy. Gas was so expensive although not compared to today, and the kids hated being in the car for so long. We tried not to complain because, after all, we were the lucky ones. My brother wasn't able to have a family of his own or take care of himself. I had faith that nothing would ruin the relationship I had with my wife. So that brings us to what went wrong. These horseback riding lessons were extremely fun, and all four of us laughed quite a bit. I thought it was great bonding time, even though I felt there was something strange about the riding instructor. His name was Alan Provich, but we'll call him AP. Even though he tried his best to play it cool and give us equal attention, he didn't look at anyone as much as he looked at my wife. I noticed he was a handsome horse guy and my wife liked that. They flirted a little, but to the untrained eye it could have just been playful chatting. AP flirted a little harder whenever he thought I wasn't looking. He'd wink at my wife, do the eyebrow, and even touched her butt in the saddle. I didn't want to cause a scene in front of our kids and didn't want to cause a rift between me and my wife. This was supposed to be fun bonding time for our family. I didn't think anything was really going on between them. It was surely harmless, fruitless flirting. One day I was cleaning the security cameras of our home when I got the urge to check that week's recorded videos minute by minute. Imagine my surprise when I came across my wife in the backyard at 3 a.m. having sex with another man. I dropped my coffee cup, which crashed onto the floor. It woke up my wife and she rushed in, asking what happened. I showed her the video screaming that before I slapped her and called her a cheater. I didn't know that our kids woke up and were devastated by what they could hear from the hallway. Their mom cheated on their father with the man that gave all of us horseback riding lessons. In her desperation to make it up to me, she told me everything. This man was actually her ex from years before. I asked her how long ago, and she really didn't want an answer, but she was sobbing and desperate to make it up to me. She admitted she met AP while I was living with my brother. It felt like something knocked the wind out of me at this moment. I asked her if they slept together back then too, and all she could do was nod. It had only been two years since I moved back in with my family. I just looked away and tried to focus on my breathing, while she explained that she knew he offered writing lessons and would agree to teach us all for cheap. She said she honestly didn't think that this would backfire, or that anything would happen between them again. She didn't intend to start an affair, but that's what happened. This was basically the same affair that I never knew about. I asked how many times they had sex, and she said since I moved back in it was only this one time because they didn't have anywhere safe to do it. There were cameras all over his farm, and his wife checked them all the time. She saw my surprise and disappointment when she said he was married too. I realized I was looking at someone I couldn't trust. She probably didn't think I would happen to check this week's security footage minute by minute, and if you would have asked me 10 minutes before I decided to, I would have told you that was a crazy idea. But lo and behold, for some reason I did, and this was the outcome. I told my wife I wouldn't forgive her for this, and the kids entered the room to tell her the same. Hearing that from your children isn't easy. She really broke down, and didn't know how to handle herself. She decided pretty quickly to move out, due to excruciating embarrassment and shame. The days leading up to her departure were extremely awkward. The kids only wanted to speak to me and pretended she wasn't there. I did have a conversation with them, saying that even though their mother cheated on me, she was still their mother, and they only needed to take this poor decision of hers as a lesson on what not to do when they grow up. 
Now we've been divorced for a few months, and she only comes in the mornings to feed the children before school. Anyone my wife knew quickly found out that she was the reason our family fell apart. I'm not sure where she stays now, but I know she's far from being able to afford a place of her own. As for AP, I told his wife what happened and offered to send her a clip of the video. She thanked me, but that was it. I guess if I was more nosy, I'd know if they were getting divorced too. OP, I am so sorry your wife cheated on you while you took care of your brother. Not only that, but she reconnected with AP knowing what happened before. She didn't tell you anything about what happened. Instead, she put you all in close contact with this man. Divorce was the better option. It seems as though your children helped you to make the harder, wiser decision. Your wife wasn't thinking about anyone but herself when she flirted and had sex with AP behind your back. It takes a cold, selfish person to cheat on their spouse and hide the truth. Even though they surely wouldn't want someone to do it to them, they do it to the people they claim to love. I believe you and the children handled this as well as anyone could. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today, I have a jaw-dropping story about how my wife lied about where she was, and what happened next was pure karma. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. This is my first time posting on Reddit, so I'm going to do my best. I don't know the acronyms yet, I'm trying to learn them all. If my writing and story is all over the place, just know I'm going off the top of my head. To start, I'm a 31 male and my wife is 28. We have two kids, ages 7 and 5. My wife asked me for a separation August 27, 2020. She left that day and was apparently living with her mom. The day after, I got messages from her cousin saying that she had been cheating on me. My wife claimed she never did up to this day. A week after, we met up to do a Zoom meeting on her phone to meet our son's teacher online. She got a Facebook message saying something like, only a few hours left with an eggplant emoji and peach emoji. After the meeting, I asked her if she could explain that, and she said she didn't want to talk about it, and that she had deleted the messages already. She said it was a girlfriend of hers because she was going on a date, and apparently girlfriends get excited for each other, and think they're just going to get laid. Which I obviously didn't believe at all. I got really upset and told her to leave. Around Thanksgiving, October for us in Canada, she told me she was taking the kids to another city to visit her grandparents and go swimming for Thanksgiving. She ended up lying and actually went with our kids and this guy she apparently cheated on me with and stayed in a hotel. On their drive back, the car engine blew and died. The same car she fought me for and owes almost $12,000 on and still makes payments every couple of weeks. This is when I started to believe in karma a little bit more. Between September and November, my wife and I drank together and had sex around five or six times. I still wanted her back and I really wanted to have sex with her. The part that I'm realizing now is that she had been seeing this guy for a while. I found pictures of them about a week and a half ago. Ever since I saw those pictures and confirmed things I've stopped talking to her. I just wanted to believe all of her lies even when they were obvious. So she cheated on me left me for him and was cheating on that guy with me. Just two weeks ago before I found out for sure she came over and we talked. She let me feel her up and give her a full body massage and everything. Right now, I can't even fathom what has been going on in her head. Some other extra facts. The kids are doing well, my apartment is spotless, and I've lost 50 pounds since she left me, 235 pounds down to 185. She came to my place a couple times, and has cried to me about how it's so unfair that I'm doing so much better than she is. She said it wasn't fair that I was doing all of this now, and not when we were together. She told me she still loved me on Christmas and bought me Christmas gifts. Not just junk but a bottle of sake because she knows how much I want to visit Japan and how much I enjoy making ramen and such. So, she put thought into it. I don't mean to sound rude but she doesn't look very good nowadays either. She put on weight and went hard into drugs and drinking. She told me she cries all the time. She told me she was depressed with me, left me thinking it'd be better, but is still depressed and that messes with her. But as we know, happiness comes from within and she has none. So if you left me for someone else, at least be happy about it and make the best of it. She hasn't texted me for four days now. That's the longest she hasn't texted me in four months. She told me before when we were together that if she ever left I would fail. When I started a job working in a kitchen I started as a dishwasher and she said I would never make any friends. Apparently she forgot how social and good with people I am. All the waitresses loved me and I moved from dishwasher to working on the line and then was asked if I'd want to bartend. At the time I was overweight and my self-worth and confidence were shot so I didn't take up the bartending job. She didn't like how many people, especially girls, ended up liking me. 
Throughout the marriage, whenever my wife and I would go out drinking, she would always end up twerking on the wall or the floor and letting guys videotape her. She flirted with everyone and even had many of my close friends thinking I wanted a threesome with her. I don't drink often, but one Halloween I drank too much at a friend's party and ended up passing out and throwing up everywhere. While I was doing that, she was in the bathroom with guys showing her chest off for free coke and who knows what else. But she convinced me nothing happened and ended up making me think I was crazy and that everyone else was wrong basically gay sliding me. I'm seeing a therapist now and I'm learning that basically she just needed attention from external sources non-stop. Getting it from her husband just wasn't enough. I know we all have issues and our marriage wasn't perfect. I know I still love her and care about her, but I won't be a backburner or a second choice. I hate comparing how me and her are doing but it makes me feel better right now. I have my own place, a dog, happy kids, my own vehicle, money, and I'm a university. Even though I feel like complete garbage, I'm working through the emotions so I can fully move on and try to be at peace. Whereas she is living with her mom with a broken car, no vehicle, asking me for money and living off CRB. COVID money, unhappy and depressed. She thought the grass was greener and found that it wasn't. She is so afraid to be alone with her own thoughts that she still sleeps with her mom or the kids sometimes. When I have moved on, she will not have. I don't know if she will ever move on because she knows she made a mistake and is stubborn. In the end, I just don't know why she cheated and left, but continued to text me, had sex with me, and told me how I'm doing so much better than her. Boggles the mind. But then again, how can you understand someone who doesn't even understand themselves? I'm doing well, but some weeks I just feel so much pain. Like she pulled my heart out, shattered it, and had sex with the other guy on top of the shattered pieces. Anyways, that's the story. There's so much more I could say in background that I could give, but I think this does it. Thanks for reading. Feel free to ask any questions or whatnot. It's a difficult time to get separated and cheated on, what with COVID happening at the same time. Wow OP. Here are my thoughts on the situation. The best advice is to go no contact except for instances that involve the kids. You need to stop letting her in the house. When she wants to talk, cut her off and walk away. She is a cake eater. She wants her cake, her affair partner, and to eat it too domestic life. You're letting her hold on to that dream by even entertaining her. I know you still love her but you admit you can't share her in your life, and that is exactly what you're doing. She can't give you what you need. Focus on yourself and your needs. Let's see what the comments had to say about the situation. OP. Here are my thoughts on the situation. The best advice is to go no contact except for instances that involve the kids. You need to stop letting her in the house. When she wants to talk, cut her off and walk away. She is a cake eater. She wants her cake, her affair partner, and to eat it too domestic life. You're letting her hold on to that dream by even entertaining her. I know you still love her but you admit you can't share her in your life, and that is exactly what you're doing. She can't give you what you need. Focus on yourself and your needs. This woman has major mental issues. I think many here have mentioned going after custody of your kids because frankly, she's a mess. She has no self-control. She shows no ability to use good judgment. So allowing her to suck you in over and over is only prolonging the inevitable. You really need to just get her out of your life and mostly out of your kids' lives. Good luck, OP. Now let's get into today's second story. I don't know what I'm looking for by sharing this. I'm just lonely, sad, and disappointed and maybe I just need some reassurance that I shouldn't consider taking her back. I've 27 male, been together with my fiancé 24 female, since the end of 2019. In my mind things were going great. I proposed last year on a mountain near a waterfall and she said yes. We talked about what the wedding would be like and having children and all that. However, during our relationship, she became less interested in having sex like from one or two times a day to one time a week or so. I hated that and tried to make things better. I was always careful with her and made sure she finished. She rarely reciprocated the things I always made sure to do. I hated that but I accepted it. I am guilty because I am not good looking and I'm a boring person. I am a web designer and I usually end up staying up late working and she woke up way sooner than I did because she was going to college at that time. She graduated last summer. I mention this because that was one of her common complaints that I stayed up late and we didn't have the same schedule. I am guilty of that indeed and the fact that I haven't had many activities outside the internet. She is also kind of lonely. She doesn't have many friends and in my mind, we were getting along great until this May when a few days prior to my birthday, she told me she wanted to break up. I was devastated. For a week, she didn't say anything and then she texted me that we had to talk and maybe sort things out because she wanted to get back with me. I forgot to mention that I moved in with her last year after I proposed around October. She told me that she was frustrated that I wasn't paying attention to her and I wasn't helping her enough with the chores. That is true. I was also frustrated by the fact that she was never in the mood. 
She said it was because she just didn't feel the need to do it. I guess it was a vicious cycle. We talked, got back together and sort of moved back to her place. However, in that particular period of time, she unintentionally hinted that she had been seeing someone during the week we were separated. I pushed her and she confessed that she had been going out with a guy but said she didn't do anything with him. I was mad but oh little did I know that it was worse than I could ever imagine. We got over it and a few days ago, with a seed of doubt planted in my mind, she asked me to look for something in her purse. I found two packs of condoms, one open with one missing. I confronted her and she told me that she didn't remember, that she would never cheat on me, that they were old. However, the unopened pack was from 2020. I acted like I believed her and maybe a part of me did. But yesterday while cleaning her desk, I moved her mouse and the screen of the laptop turned on. I want to mention that never have I ever invaded the privacy of anyone, but given the last days I needed answers. I read on her Facebook chats with a girlfriend of hers that indeed she wanted me back and she didn't do anything with him even though she lied to me about how she met him. With a sigh of relief, I searched for the word sex in a conversation with another girl she was close to last year. I wanted to know what I was doing wrong or why she didn't like it and oh boy did my world crash right there. The first result was from last year, where my fiancé described how hot her athletic colleague was and how much she wanted him. It was a graphic description. The others described how she went to a coffee shop with him in a short skirt and then she went to his house and had sex with him. That was during the months of April and May. I don't know how many times it happened. She said she was trembling and that he had sent her a couple of pictures and she couldn't refuse him. At that point my hands were shaking and I felt sick. I went back even further and she had talked to her about other guys she was talking to in March and she said she was considering getting Tinder. I confronted her yesterday and she couldn't believe I found out. For half an hour, she kept saying she hadn't cheated on me until she started crying and got on her knees. She said that it was a mistake and that she loved me and wanted to marry me and have my children and all that. I got what I could carry of my things, packed them into my car and left. While OP you're doing everything right except for one thing blaming yourself. You're a decent, honorable guy and you don't deserve this kind of treatment. Nobody does. Remember, she could have said no to the engagement. She could have come to you before breaking up and said that she wanted to date other people. She could have canceled the engagement at any time because of doubts. You're the innocent victim of her bad actions. Forget the alpha slash beta crap. Good women stick with good guys. She's not a good woman. If you want a good woman, keep being a good guy but maybe with a little more awareness next time. For now, do what makes you happy. Sports, working out, hobbies, reading and travel. Do all the things you always wanted to do in your life. Empty the bucket list. Your happiness will not start when you find the right woman. You'll find the right woman when you're happy and want to share it. I wish you the best of luck with your situation, OP. Thanks for taking the time to listen to today's stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and comment below with your thoughts on today's stories. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation, or someone else's then please do not hesitate to contact me.